And so this is hopefully just a quick video with a little bit of demonstration and some examples to kind of show you how I um, how I work with my mixed media and my intuitive painting. Uh, in about 2005 was when I really started as a mixed media artist. So you can kind of get an idea of some of my earlier mixed media work. It involves uh, found object, painting, printmaking, found papers, just kind of anything I could get my hands on. I would find things in the street sometimes where it's like, oh, this is a neat wrapper. I can use this in something. So uh, it's good to kind of remember that almost anything, if you're thinking creatively, can kind of, you know, if you feel attached to something you, you find in the world or that you see, it might be because just intuitively you know that it would maybe be fun for your work. And then in about 2014, I moved into more primarily acrylic based intuitive painting, but I do intuitive work with mixed media collage as well. I just don't do it quite as often. And I don't really have a lot of videos currently that demonstrate that style so much. So I'll, uh, I'll put in some more here. <laughs> <laughs> that show my uh, straight up acrylic intuitive work and then also my mixed media intuitive work. Just getting started, I usually like to listen to music. I find it just kind of nice to have something that I can let my mind kind of get caught up in and just kind of not think too much about uh, what I'm doing. Because I think a big part of intuitive painting is just kind of being present and enjoying the process. Just be where you are, <laughs> enjoying the moment and enjoying being creative and not, not trying to think what the end piece will look like and not trying to worry about where is this going and if something gets kind of what you perceive as ugly because there are things that I don't like in my work that other people love and, and so even if you're being very hard or critical on yourself, other people could truly appreciate and love and see beauty in what you're doing, even if you don't. I don't know how much knowledge people will have about different acrylic paints or mediums coming into this, so I'm going to take just a couple minutes and kind of review that so that you know or you're refreshed if it's not something you've played with before. One thing I highly recommend is um, Michaels or Dick Blick will have kind of these big big guys. I think there's a Utrecht one and they're really fairly affordable as far as paints go. You get a lot and they're usually a good quality. They're often soft body paints so I'll show you what that means. A soft body paint is going to have a kind of thickness to it. If you move your canvas, if you um, spread it out, you know, it's going to hold its form. It's not going to drip out a lot. It's going to stay pretty consistent where you put it. So you can go in with other tools. It will hold its shape for that. These are also really good if you want to do stencils. So this is um, golden, this is a fluid acrylic, which I usually refer to as liquid acrylic. So I'm probably going to mess that up. So these are two different kinds. The high flow one are these guys. So this is carbon, carbon black. But you'll notice it has this kind of a, it on this side. You'll notice it has a, a kind of drippy top as opposed to a lid. It, it really drips. It's a, so with that, you're not going to get the same kind of holding its, its shape. But because this is so liquidy, you can take a fairly damp brush. It has a really long brush tip, but it's very fun for these sort of delicate round lines. You're going to be way more successful with a more liquidy paint doing that kind of line work than you will with a thick body. You can see with this soft body, you'll get it, but the lines aren't quite as, as even where these ones are pretty solid. You can kind of see here what I'm playing with. 
And the other thing you'll notice when you play with these, when you spray, the very fluid ones will really interact with that water and you can get a lot of drips with it too, which can be really fun. And the drips will interact with some of the lines you created even. Back to the fluid acrylic, so that's these, any of these, I use a lot of golden brand. They're very good. It's not quite as drippy as the high fluid. So it's not as fluid as the other liquid ones. You can see the high fluid ones are dripping where these aren't, but it's still a very, very liquidy paint where this is still very thick. You can definitely mix the colors together. There's nothing wrong with mixing high fluid and hard or soft body acrylics. This crazy mess that I'm making is exactly how I get started. There's these really fun tools like these guys that I'm sure have some kind of name and I don't know what it is. Uh, they're kind of like those rubber things that you have in the kitchen, but they have notches or different marks kind of let's see here, taken out of them. And so they make those different marks. Some of these are going to work best. Some of these mark making techniques are going to work best with softer body or more liquid bodied paints. You get a feel for it in time, but a big part of it too is just, again, enjoying painting and enjoying mark making. So try not to stress if something doesn't quite do what you wanted or what you expected it to do. Just let things kind of do what they do and, you know, meet, meet your materials with the skill set that you have. This guy makes these kind of things and then you can even come over and you could let this dry and then you have that texture in your painting and you can paint over it later and it will keep those bumpies. One thing I want to mention when you're mixing wet paints with other wet paints, it's best to either stick with all cool colors or all warm colors. I tend to be really drawn towards cool colors. I need to make myself use warm colors more often. Cool colors, these are all cool colors. These greens, blues, Green. shades of purple, like your beiges, like this is warm. Reds are warm, pink, yellow, greens, gold. No, some greens, because I just saw this one. This would actually be kind of a warmer tone green where your like deep forest green would be more of a cool green. The main thing is you want to kind of keep similar colors together because it will keep the integrity and vibrancy of your colors. If you mix too many cool and red colors, you'll get a lot of just kind of neutral brown tones. And if you're going for a bunch of kind of muddy brown tones, that's okay, <laughs> by all means. If that's what you're going for, there's nothing wrong with that. Then I tend to be very, very vibrant and use a lot of really bright colors. It's not necessarily for everyone. Not everyone likes that much bright color in their work and that's okay. So, you know, a, a bit of mixing it, a bit of getting kind of muted colors or browns is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you're trying to avoid that and it kind of keeps happening to you, it's because you're mixing your cool colors and warm colors. If you let this dry and then come back and do warm colors over it, you're fine because the cool colors won't mix with it anymore. So another quick thing that you can do kind of mark making wise, let me get my bit. I really like having a spray bottle spray water down and get different drip textures from it, which I, I always love this kind of stuff that it does these sort of just interesting drips that happen. I, I really, I'm, you'll find those in all of my pieces, at least somewhere in the process, just cause I love watching how the paint and the water naturally interact with each other. To flatten this out one second. So normally I wouldn't necessarily do this because I'm kind of, I would take more of a break and come back to the canvas and let it dry normally. But for this, where I'm trying to do it more as an example, 
I need some dry canvas space, so that's what I'm making right here. Bubble wrap is a really great, cheap tool to make a lot of repetitive circles, a lot of repetitive designs. You just, if you have a soft body that you want it to be wet, but not too wet, so you want it to be kind of sticky to the touch, you don't want it to be liquidy. And so you press it down, then you go to another spot, and you can put your dots there. It will give you two different kind of things. It will give you the marks where you picked up the paint and the marks that it leaves. Once upon a time, I have no idea where, I think it was a clearance at a Blick art supply. I don't normally have my hair nice. It's normally just all tied back. There were these like uh, clay tools, I think. They were just all these wooden, like a pack for kids to play with for clay. And this is awesome. I found it, you know, you'll just find, just keep your eye out for kind of homemade stencil things. But this one's cool because, and you want the paint to usually be just a titch liquidy, not, not super runny, but damp enough that you'll get an even layer on your tool. And you can roll it in that and then go over other sections. Let's see if I can make this show up better. Here we go. And you can get these lines. Let's get a brighter color in here for contrast. Let's see here, because I needed it to show up a little better here. There we go. Yeah, so it'll give you that sort of a thing, which is enjoyable to me. I like that. You can also go in with paper towel. If you have sections that are kind of kind of dry, kind of wet, you can kind of mat it like this, like you're angry. You just kind of are. And you can touch in like this. And that will also give you other textures. So that's just a quick look at mark making. There's way, way more things you can do, way more extensive ways you can play with it. That's just kind of a really quick intro. So if you're interested in trying it, that's kind of a good start. It's a good starting point for a lot of my pieces is just playing. <laughs> I get messy. Uh, it's a wonder this shirt does not have paint on it already. Uh, I had to find a shirt that looked presentable to people.